They, they, they're unwise enough to send them to me and say, hey, you did this, and I, I wasn't even there. I don't even care about what you're talking about. I mean, there are perceptions that people form of one another that we take on ourselves without ever getting to know them. And the same thing happens with God. People form a perception of God without ever even making an attempt at getting to know Him for themselves. And if you're willing to risk your eternity based on someone else's opinion or perception, you are wagering a very weighty thing. And I would just encourage you today, man, keep coming over the next few weeks and listen as I begin to, to describe to you the nature and the character of God from the Bible. One of the most accurate and passed down books in all of humanity. It's been proven time and time again in its accuracy through manuscripts throughout generations and generations to be accurate. And the Bible tells us it is God breathed. It was literally put in the heart of man to write to us so that you and I could hold and know the very God who sent this word to us. Today we're going to look at the name Jehovah Sitkanu. Now it's spelled pretty strange and the script there makes it even funner. It's a T-S-I-D-K-E-N-U. Is that a W? Yeah. That's okay. It's a U. It doesn't matter anyway. I just think of it like this. Sit in a canoe. Jehovah sit canoe. There you go. That'll help you remember it. You will remember that more than you remember the name yeah. any day. God doesn't sit in a canoe, but, you know, Jehovah. Now, the word Jehovah is the Hebrew name for God. And I told you this last week, that the Hebrew... Uh, the Hebrew people were in such reverence of God that they really wouldn't even say this name. They felt it profane to even utter Jehovah or Jehovah. But it's the Hebrew name for God, and the word Sitkanu literally means to be straight or right. R-I-G-H-T, mean to be right. Now when you put these things together, it can be translated this, the Lord who is our righteousness. Jehovah Sitkanu means the Lord who is our righteousness. Now, you need to understand this. As a human being, whether you have a relationship with God now or not, whether you're just beginning to, to discover this and, and hear all of this for the first time, God's greatest desire has always been to have a relationship with you. You were created for relationship with God. And the greatest desire of the heart of God has always been to have a relationship with you. But unfortunately, sin has separated humanity from God. When Adam and Eve chose to disobey God in the Garden of Eden, sin and separation from God entered all humanity. I could take all day long and prove that to you all throughout the Bible and show you that one man's disobedience, one man's transgression, one man's sin, the Bible says, immediately entered into all of the human race. Because in God, there is no darkness. There is no sin. There is no shadow of turning. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. And sin and disobedience, transgression, darkness can not exist with God. It cannot exist. It cannot be connected to God because God is all-powerful and is light and is truth and is love and it dispels darkness. So when man disobeyed God, he was immediately dispelled and, and, and pushed away from relationship with God. And this sin that has separated humanity from God, Ephesians 2 verse 12 says this, that we all are without hope and without God in the world. Now, you know, we, we've got things that happen all the time, you know, hope and change. Now, you know, that was somebody's campaign slogan here recently, but there are a lot of people who were believing for hope and change and there's been no change and no hope for them. There are people on the, the Gulf Coast right now looking for some hope. There are people all over the globe looking for hope. And our perception of hope is something that is human rather than divine. Because true hope is something that alleviates all pain. It really alleviates all discomfort, all uncertainty. True hope only comes from God. And the Bible says that we and all of us without, in sin were without hope and without God in the world. And man, Adam and Eve, through their fall, they were totally and completely incapable of self-recovery. 
There was nothing that they could do or that you and I could do to reinstate ourselves to our original relationship with God. Man had lost everything with God and there was nothing he could do about it. No amount of begging or pleading or sorrow or crying or hiding or whining or any good works or good deeds could ever change that condition once disobedience and sin entered the human race. Nothing could be done completely without hope and without God in the world was all of humanity because of one man's transgression. I know some people, well, that's not fair. I know it's not fair. But it's what it is. It's the way God created things. He said, this is what you should do. This is what I ask you not to do. And when man did what he was not supposed to do, there was no other course of action than separation from God. In Psalm 14, verse 3, it says, All have turned aside. There is no one who is good, not even one. Isaiah 64, verse 6 says, All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory or the standard of God. And this sounds cruel, doesn't it? All they did was take a bite out of an apple, right? Just a, a little apple. But isn't that what we say about sin today? Oh, it's just, it's just, it was no big deal. It didn't hurt anybody. I mean, no one really saw it. I mean, forevermore, it was just a piece of candy. It was only a few bucks. It was just one night. It was just one time. I didn't really mean it. It was no big deal. Well, you know that God does not exist in the realm of, well, it was no, no big deal. It wasn't really that bad. No, God is absolute truth. He's absolute love. He's absolute justice. He is absolute in everything. And you and I know partiality in most everything. We brought in even ourselves. It's not just black and white. There's a little gray, right? We even say it's, it's not a, a lie. Sometimes it's a, a little white lie. No, the Bible clearly says to turn from God is to completely turn aside. To even try to do halfway right is not good enough. To even try to attempt to do well and make a few mistakes is still not good enough. So what was God's answer to all this? Jeremiah 23, if you've got your Bible, verses 5 and 6. Jeremiah was a prophet that God used to speak, and they called him the weeping prophet because he was always crying, you know, crying out to the children of Israel, crying out to God's chosen people in their state, in their condition. He was constantly being used by God to say, hey, come back, come back, come back, come back. Look at what you're doing, look at what you're doing. Well, there comes this verse, chapter 23, verse 5. And God says, say this to them. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up to David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. Now what God is saying through Jeremiah to the children of Israel, to his chosen people is this. I am going to raise up through the lineage of David, this one who will be king in Israel. I'm going to create an ancestral line where this man will come, this one will come as a king who will reign just and be right. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell in safety. There is a name by which he will be called. And here it is, the Lord our righteousness. 